Hi, welcome to another video for CE410 or hydraulics and for this video we're gonna be solving again another problem regarding orifice and for to those who didn't watch my video lecture regarding orifice kindly watch my video and I will put the link on the description below. Let's go! So this is the problem. Problem number three from the figure shown the tank is elevated two meters from the ground up to the level of orifice. The constant head of water from the upper surface down to the orifice is 3 meters. Determine how far horizontally will the water strike the ground. Let's go! So looking at the figure, we have here a tank. So the tank is filled with water. So as you can see, the tank is open meaning there is no input gauge pressure whatsoever inside the tank and the water surface is exposed to the atmosphere. Now, there is an orifice on the bottom part of the tank here. So water is being discharged here at the orifice and the level of the orifice is 2 meters above the ground level. So this is the ground level. Let's denote that as GL. Now, the constant head of water is 3 meters from the orifice up to the water surface. Now, let's assume that as constant and there is a continuous supply here inside the tank. So, our problem is that determine how far horizontally. So, if water is being discharged here at the orifice and the level of the orifice is somewhat elevated. So, in this case, it is elevated 2 meters. Then, of course, water will be in a trajectory. So, again, water will not fall like this, but in a trajectory. So, in this case, we need to determine how far horizontally. So, so, in reference to the orifice, we need to determine the distance to where the water will strike the ground. And let's denote that as X. Let's go! So, now let's go to the solution. So, we need to determine the value of X. So, from our knowledge from dynamics, we have a formula y is equal to x tangent theta minus gx square all over 2 times the initial velocity square times cosine square theta. Now, upon looking on the formula, y is the vertical displacement, meaning it is the reference distance at the vertical axis, while x is the horizontal displacement meaning it is the reference distance at the horizontal axis then theta is the angle of trajectory and initial velocity will be determined at the orifice let's go so just a few reminders regarding the sign conventions for y and x so if y is above a reference position so for example our reference level is at ground level and y is above that ground level so our sign convention will be negative so if that's below the reference position then y is positive so in some cases if the motion is upward then our sign convention for that is negative. Then, if the motion of a particle or an object is downward, then the sign convention for that is positive. So, also, for x, if the motion is going to the right, then our sign convention is positive. Then, if the motion is going to the left, then x is negative. Let's go! Also, we need to be aware on this angle of trajectory theta. Now, upon recalling on 
the concepts of projectile motion. So if a particle is moving on projectile at a certain angle of trajectory theta, so at an initial velocity of p sub i, so if that particle reaches the apex or the maximum vertical displacement, so let's denote that as y sub max. So in this instance, there is no vertical component of v or the vertical component of velocity v sub y because the particle will not get any higher and we only consider the horizontal component of velocity or v sub x. So in this case, since there is no vertical motion in that instance, so if at apex or y sub max, then the angle of trajectory is 0 degrees. Now, if we want to determine what is the possible maximum x displacement that the particle can travel from the initial position, so we use the angle of trajectory 45 degrees. So if for x max, then we use the angle 45 degrees. Let's go! And since water is being discharged here at the orifice, then initially the motion is directed horizontally. Now, if the motion is directed horizontally, then there is no vertical component of velocity. So in this case, our angle of trajectory will be zero. Let's go! So where will we get this V sub i or initial velocity? So since we're talking about the discharge of water in an orifice at a given constant head, then we can compute for the value of V or velocity by using the equation V is equal to the square root of 2G uppercase H. And in this case, this is V sub D or theoretical velocity. So if you're gonna ask me, sir, what kind of velocity that we will be using in such problems like this so you can watch my video lecture for device coefficients and I will link it on the description below so for me if X is directly measured meaning it is already given then you can compute for the actual velocity now, if x is unknown and the coefficient of velocity is not given, then you use theoretical velocity. So, if c sub v or the coefficient of velocity is given, then why not use it? So you can compute or you may use V sub A or actual velocity. Let's go! So as per the problem, there is no given C sub B or coefficient of velocity. Also, X is unknown. So in this case, we'll be using V sub T or theoretical velocity. Now, we compute for the theoretical velocity. That's the square root of 2 times 9.81 so as I've said H depends on the existing energy at the orifice so since there is no any input gauge pressure here then H is equal to H then small h or lowercase h is equal to 3 meters so this is times 3 so Let's compute for the value of V sub T. So let's use the calculator. That's the square root of 2 times, oops, sorry, 2 times 9.81 times 3. So 
The initial velocity is 7.67 meters per second. So let's write it down here. 7.6720 meters per second. Now, since we're gonna use this value on our formula, then let's store this velocity at A. Let's go! So now, let's plug in all the values in the formula. So for y, since the position of the discharge is above ground level, then let's denote that as negative. Or the sign convention is negative. So that's negative 2 meters equals the unknown x times tangent 0 degrees minus 9.81 times x square all over 2 times initial velocity. So we stored that at A in the calculator square times cosine square theta or theta is 0 degrees. So let's determine the value of x by using shift solve function in the calculator. So, then for cosine square theta, so Let's put cosine inside the quantity or parenthesis. That's cosine oops, 0. So for this, just complete first the parenthesis. Don't put the square on the angle 0. So put that exponent outside the parenthesis in order for us to get cosine square theta. So, shift solve. Shift solve equals. So, the value of A is correct. That's 7.67 equals. So, since the equation here is quadratic, so it has two roots. So, in order for us to not get a negative root or a negative answer then we put a positive value here so i put 10 any positive number then equals so the answer is so x would be 4.89898 meters so this is The horizontal distance that the water will strike the ground or the value of x let's go so that's it for this video so i hope you learned something and see you on the next video